Wow, this is uh, this is running even better than I expected it to. Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and today we're gonna be taking a look at a brand new mini PC. It is called the UM790 Pro, and it is by a company called Minus Forum. And basically they are saying that this is about 20% faster than the computers that they put out last year. And so in this video, we're gonna unbox it as well as run some benchmarks to see if that actually is a true statement or not. And we're gonna run a bunch of games, both old and new. Let's take a look. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. But I do need to let you know that this was sent to me for review. However, all of the opinions are my own. This computer is rocking an AMD Ryzen 9 7940 HS processor, which sounds very fancy, but basically what you need to know is that it has eight cores and 16 threads. And those cores run at four gigahertz, but they can boost up to 5.2 gigahertz. Included in the box, you get an HDMI cable. There is a 120 watt power supply and brackets if you wanted to mount it either behind your television or on the wall. And here's the unit itself, and it's basically the same size as last year's, which is good. It was already really small. It may look a little taller, but actually the only difference is that on the newer model, they have these glue-on pads on the bottom, probably to help with airflow. To give you a better idea of just how small this thing is, here it is stacked up against five PlayStation 1 games. So yeah, it's really small. On the front, you have a power button as well as two USB-C ports. Now these are the faster USB 4, so you can actually use them as video out. They'll go up to 4K. Or if you have an external graphics card and you wanna get a little bit better performance in games, this is where you plug it in. And then it has an audio jack where you can plug in headphones and it's got built-in microphones. On the back is where you plug in the 19 volt power supply, which is also included in the box, thankfully. You have two HDMI ports, so in theory, if you use the USB ports on the front and the HDMI ports on the back, you could technically run four displays off of this thing. That's pretty crazy. There is your ethernet port, but it also supports Wi-Fi as well as Bluetooth. And then next to that, there are four regular USB ports. And so as you can see, there is a ton of flexibility in this pretty small computer. This supports up to 64 gigabytes of DDR5 dual channel RAM. This particular review unit came to me with only 16 gigabytes of RAM, but I think that's gonna be enough for most people. And it comes with a fully licensed version of Windows 11 Pro. And the cost of this starts at $520 on their website, but that is for the bare bones version of it. If you already have RAM and an SSD that you can pop in here, you can definitely save yourself some money. Now, depending on what you read about these mobile processors, it could be anywhere from, I don't know, like 15% to 28% faster, depending on which of the benchmarking pieces of software that you run on it. And since I previously reviewed their older mini PC, I still have that here. So we're gonna run good old Cinebench on it and compare the scores. On the left, you have the computer from a year ago. And then on the right, you have the new machine. And you can see it's getting about 22% better performance. Its score on multi-core is 16,698. And on single core performance, it's even better. So we're getting about 25% better performance. So its score is 1,806. However, Cinebench only tests the CPU and well, we're gamers, so we care about the graphics too. 3D Mark has a benchmarking tool that will specifically test CPUs with integrated graphics like this. Now, this is interesting because on the left, you have last year's model and it got a graphics score of 23,000 458. And then this newer computer gets a graphic score of 31,553. That is a 29% graphical increase in performance. I was not expecting this. And this seems to confirm that this is indeed quite a bit faster. But every one of these benchmarking pieces of software is a little bit different. And what really matters to you and I is how the games run. Let's go ahead and start with a game that can make a lot of computers cry. And that is Cyberpunk 2077. 
Now this game has a benchmarking tool and that will let you know what to expect at different you know, resolutions, different performance settings. And I was, I was feeling optimistic here. So I tried 4K. This is with medium graphical settings and you can see in the upper corner there that we're about 25, almost hitting 30 frames a second, which I gotta be honest with you, was better than I expected. Now, I wouldn't consider this to be optimal settings and I probably wouldn't play the game this way. And again, keep in mind that we're talking about a mini PC here with mobile computing technology in there. It's not meant to be a big gaming desktop replacement, right? It, there are a lot of compromises that have to be made to get it into that small form factor. And so I decided to do something a little bit more realistic and I bumped it down to 1080p and then suddenly the game becomes very playable. You can see it here. We're getting in the 50 frames per second range with again, I feel like is very playable. This looks and plays great. You know who you're messing with? Hold on, gotta reload! Ah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Here's another game that has a really good benchmarking tool. It's a little bit older, but it's good to run on systems like this. It's called Assetto Corsa. And this is pretty interesting because again, I thought I'd be fairly aggressive here and try 4K with the world detail at maximum. And you can see from this footage that we're getting a pretty rock solid 30 frames per second, again, running at 4K. Now it dips a little bit here and there, but I don't think it looks too bad. However, most people will probably expect these games to run at 1080p, especially with a mini computer. So I bumped it down to 1080p, full details, and here you're getting a much smoother, I guess it's like 80 to 90 frames per second as an average. And honestly, this is the way you would play it. It runs so much smoother. And so you'd have to ask yourself, how important is 4K versus frame rate, right? Like if 4K is your thing, if you're running this on a big HD television, maybe that's what is a concern to you, then you're probably gonna have to compromise and you know lower the detail to get closer to 30 frames per second. But if you can live with 1080p, why not do that? This system seems to run that just fine. And by the way, this is a very quiet computer. I've been using it for over a week now and I barely ever heard the fan turn on. Here's another one, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And for this one, I was like, okay, we're gonna do 1080p, but I'm gonna turn on V-Sync and we're gonna use the high preset. And I think this looks very good. It's really smooth. Now I know this is an older game, but there is a surprising amount of detail in this. And so I do think it's a, it's a good test, you know? especially in scenes like this, where there's a lot of detail going on. And as you can see from this footage, it looks and runs really good. Here is Resident Evil 2. And again, I tried 4K just, just to try. <laughs> Call me an optimist. But really this game is meant to be ran on this hardware at 1080p. And you see that right here. So we're running at 1080p and we're getting, you know, around 60 frames a second. Sometimes there's a little bit of a dip, but Again, it looks and runs really well. Here is Doom Eternal, and we're running this at 1080p with high settings. Now ray tracing is turned off here, and I think this is running like butter. As you see here, it is really smooth. We're consistently getting 60 frames a second, which is what you'd want in a fast paced action shooter like this. Now I did try as an experiment, turning on ray tracing for a couple minutes. And honestly, this game is so fast. I don't think you need it. I don't think you'd want to do it. I think you'd, you'd go for the higher frame rate, just, you know, again, for a game like this, which is so fast paced, but it's an option if you want it. Now let's go ahead and check out System Shock Remake that just came out. And this defaulted to 1080p on this computer with medium settings. And again, as you see here, it's running really well, hitting somewhere between 40 and 50 frames a second. Now I have to say that this feels like a very well optimized game. It seems like you can go into the settings and mix and match and kind of find your sweet spot as to 
how much of detail you want with this, but it pretty much just ran it extremely well. Now let's check out some older games, starting with Spec Ops The Line. This is a game that originally came out during the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 era, and so I was feeling pretty optimistic here. I immediately jumped to 4K and it was rougher than I expected it to be. We're getting anywhere from 15 to 30 frames per second, but often it was barely 15 during gameplay. Now that was with very high detail. And like so many other games, if you just bump that down to 1080p, well, you're getting a pretty rock solid frame rate here. Although it's weird because the game fluctuates between 60 frames per second and 30, depending on the scenario. It, it's almost like it was programmed that way. And so part of me thinks that this could be a 4K game, especially on modern hardware, but maybe it's being held back somehow. I'm not entirely sure. Another slightly older game that I wanted to mention is Need for Speed The Run, which as I've said before is probably in my top five Need for Speed games of all time. And so anytime I have a, an excuse to play it, I will. And this is pretty interesting because you can go in there and max out all of the settings at 4K and the game basically just runs at a rock solid 30 frames a second, pretty much 95% of the time. I don't think that there is a way to unlock the frame rate in this game. I do believe it's probably just programmed to be a 30 frames a second game, but the benefit is that you can run it on this hardware at 4K, no problem. And if we check out games that are even a little older than that, we have Silent Hill 3 running on a PlayStation 2 emulator. And as you would expect, you're probably not gonna have any problems here. So. This is probably my favorite Silent Hill game, to be honest with you, and I think it looks and plays great. Moving on to the Dreamcast, we're checking out Hydro Thunder, another game that I always go to whenever I'm gonna be playing on my Dreamcast, and this looked and played great as well. And these mini PCs are really well designed, even if you wanna go back and play old classic arcade games. So we're playing Road Blasters here. Uh, we're gonna be checking out Russian Attack. as well as PlayStation 1 era games. You see me playing Speed Punks here. Now I'm not messing with any of the settings. I'm not trying to artificially smooth any of the graphics or anything like that. I haven't applied any mods to these games whatsoever. And you know, there's no surprise here. Of course they run just fine. Since it is a computer and has Windows 11, I should probably check out some Windows type stuff. Browsing the web is fine, no surprise there. Also Steam and GOG run just flawlessly on here as well. And then here is some 4K video footage running on YouTube and yeah, it looks really good. So what's the bottom line here? Well, the first thing I wanna mention is that on my previous video, when I was reviewing other mini PCs, some people in the comments were saying, hey, they don't recommend you get this if you're just looking for a dedicated gaming machine. Get an Xbox Series X or a PS5. And I completely agree with that. Because as you can see from this footage, this is not a 4K gaming PC. It's certainly powerful and designed for laptops, but it barely does 4K and you would have to lower the detail so, so far that I don't think it'd be worth it. Now it is a really decent 1080p gaming machine, but you can get better performance and optimization from a current gen console. If you're just looking for something that is a dedicated gaming machine. But if you need a small computer that can also do 1080p gaming, then this is definitely a really good option for people. This is a really interesting time because you can see that companies like AMD, Intel, and even Apple are pouring billions of dollars in research and development into making these really fast mobile processors and graphics chips. And it is cool to see such a big performance leap in just a year. It's pretty exciting, I think. 
And for me personally, while I do have full-size computers in my game room and in my office, I really like what's happening in this space here as well. I love these compact little computers. They are extremely versatile and they take up very little space. I'm gonna go ahead and put a link down below in the video description if you wanna take a look at it. And as always guys, I wanna thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing and take care.